So about 15, 20 years ago, I stepped on a nail. And I came home, I told my mom, I said, mom, 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 I stepped on a nail, I stepped on a nail. She was like, oh shit, well, we gotta go get a tetanus shot. And I had no clue. And I'll be honest with you, when I started med school, I had no clue what a tetanus shot was. So what we're gonna do <laughs> is we're gonna talk about tetanus because the odds are you have no clue either. So let's talk about tetanus, tetanus shots, and the top five things to know about tetanus and the shot. I'm just gonna sit back like a curious child and I want you to tell me a about tetanus, the history, but like it's a story. So you want me to story tell? I want you to story tell these five points to me. We're gonna story tell. And I want you guys to sit back, relax, sit on that couch, sit in that computer desk, sit at work and just listen to a children's story. I too have once stepped on a nail and needed to get a tetanus shot and I was like, what the fuck is that? So what is tetanus? Well, tetanus is actually referring to a specific bacteria called Clostridium tetany. Sounds like a rapper. <laughs> it is, it might as well be, that'll be my rap name. So it's a gram positive bacteria and it's a spore forming organism, meaning it can't be eliminated from the environment. The spores develop in the soil. So you can get it when you cut yourself and you land in soil. You can also get it through IV drug abuse or following surgical procedures. The problem with Clostridium tetany is it produces two different toxins, one called tetanospasmin and the other one called tetanolysin. What does that really mean though? I don't, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I care. What does it mean? <laughs> so what happens is these toxins are actually what's responsible for causing your muscles to spasm. As a result of these toxins being near your nerves, they basically tell your muscle nerves to shut the f up. So your muscle nerves can no longer do what they're meant to do, which is controlled contraction, and they just start spasming at any given moment, and that's what's called tetany. So translation, there are bacteria that live all over the place, so if you get a wound and that wound is dirty, there might be tetanus in it, and you may have to get a tetanus shot. And that's why your mom, when you step on a nail, says, we gotta go get a tetanus shot. Number two, tetanus was historically referred to as lockjaw because it literally causes spasms that are so tight, some people literally could not move their jaw. So if you get infected, it could cause things like fever, I don't feel well, my blood pressure's whack, or your muscles could literally spasm, your jaw can shut, you can mess with the muscles of breathing, and you can die. All right, number three. Speaking about the history of tetanus, we have to understand that it's been described for eternity. Clinical descriptions of tetanus associated with wounds have been written in texts as far back as the fourth century BC. I call BS. <laughs> I'm gonna fact check this right now. <laughs> I'm fact checking everything. In fact, when you look at old scientific books and old scientific authors like Hippocrates, he wrote a book called Aphorisms in 400 BC. And in one of the passages he states, if situated behind spasm and tetanus supervene, and if before mania, acute pains of the sides or suppurations or dysentery, if the swellings be rather red. Good job, Teddy Ruxpin. So basically what Hippo was basically saying is like, oh my God, this person like injured his foot and shit, he's like squeezing up and tight. That's basically all the history is saying. But he just wrote it like a damn poem for no reason. I'm telling you, tetanus has been around for such a long time. Maybe Hippocrates should have just said that. Tetanus has been around for a long time. Yeah, but that would know, assume that Hippocrates would live until now to be able to say that. That's fair. Do you have a fourth one? <laughs> a fourth what? <laughs> oh. Number four, there is a tetanus vaccine that everyone should get. Oh, there they go, there they go. Every time we start talking about organisms, a pediatrician gotta talk about vaccine. I'm glad that I sound like a preacher, but also like, sue me for caring about a public health intervention that saves millions of lives a year. Anyway, I digress, mic drop. There is a tetanus vaccine out there. Young kids get five of them between being a baby to their six years old, then teens around 11 or 12 will get a booster, and then every 10 years, you should be getting a tetanus booster. This might be the difference of what your treatment's gonna look like if you do step on a dirty nail that is in the soil covered in that tetanus bacteria. We actually didn't really associate the organism, Clostridium tetany, to the soil until about the late 1800s. Okay, Grandpa, here's the, oh, let me tell you about the history of the history of the history. In 1889, Clostridium tetany was actually <laughs> isolated by human beings. It was actually isolated by a Japanese physician. What he showed was that the toxin the organism produced could be neutralized by antibodies, right? Antibodies are proteins that can bind things. 
And Edmund Nocard, a French veterinarian and microbiologist, actually showed that tetanus antitoxin induced passive immunity in humans, meaning that antibody bound and didn't allow for the disease to take place. So during the First World War, injection of anti-serum from horses actually helped to treat soldiers who were wounded in battle and they were less likely to develop tetanus. This guy was like experimenting on people during the war. This like, actually led to the tetanus toxoid vaccine developed in 1924. And by World War II, all of the soldiers had it. We didn't have any episodes of tetany essentially during the Second World War, disease cured. Okay, the history is actually kind of dope because someone did have the foresight to be like, okay, hold up, me infect this horse and then <laughs> give the horse's antibodies to these soldiers. Was he on the battlefield doing it? Listen, of course he <laughs> like, wasn't on the battlefield. I mean, you gotta think about this. This science is so f***ing cool. Vaccines work, just saying. So recap, there are five tetanus shots that kids get between being a baby to six years old, another one that's a booster when kids are around 11 to 12 years old, and then you're gonna get a booster every 10 years. The whole point of getting the tetanus shot leads us to number five. How do we diagnose Clostridium tetany, and what are the signs and symptoms of this infection? All right, number five, <laughs> diagnosing tetanus, the physical exam findings, and treating it. We know that people do not keep up with their vaccine schedules as they're supposed to. So they're not getting vaccinated every 10 years for tetanus. So what do we do for these individuals? So think about it. If the stuff is all over the soil and you get a wound and your wound is dirty and you didn't get that tetanus vaccine in the past, is your doctor gonna be worried about tetanus? <gasps> yeah, ding, ding, ding. Which is why there is a little chart that doctors use and it helps us determine whether or not you need to get a tetanus shot, something called tetanus immunoglobulin, which directly fights the bacteria. And we base this on whether or not a wound you get is clean or dirty and also how long it's been since you got your last tetanus booster or if you got one at all. Antibodies that fight tetanus, it's actually binding to the toxin, not allowing the toxin to allow your nerves to have that spasm. If you decide I'm not gonna get a tetanus vaccine and you go and get a wound and the tetanus bacteria gets into your bloodstream, it can be life-threatening. Straight up, I have seen a child who was unvaccinated become intubated, that means breathing tube, down this child's throat to help him breathe because he was not given a vaccine. Completely could have been prevented. Breathing requires muscle. Muscle requires nerve to be activated. So if that toxin's in the stream, that nerve is going to be abnormal and not be able to tell the muscle to take a deep breath. Your brain might say take a deep breath, but your muscles are gonna be like, can't, tetanus. The ultimate question becomes this. A little to pediatrician. So how do you tell parents when to be worried about clostridium tetany? I mean, long story short, we don't tell parents like, hey, if your child falls, you gotta worry about tetanus. We say you have to worry about any type of infection. So if a fall results in a break in the skin, meaning the skin is open, there's blood, there's a wound, whatever, and it looks concerning, it looks infected, you're just generally worried, it's a good idea to talk to your doctor. We will ask you about your history of tetanus vaccines to make sure that you are protected. We mentioned the tetanus vaccine can prevent this sickness, but you can also get the tetanus vaccine right after a wound. It takes about eight days for the tetanus bacteria to actually get to a level where it can cause disease in your body. So a doctor, if presented with the wound, if this doctor is concerned about tetanus, will look at a couple factors. How clean or dirty is the wound? And also, do you have a complete history of getting a tetanus vaccine? And then the recommendation may be to get a tetanus vaccine after your wound. You may also need to get tetanus immunoglobulin, which directly fights the toxin, or you might not need to get anything because you're responsible and you got your vaccines on time. Thanks for joining us today in our talk about tetanus. Please give us a subscription. Go ahead and hit subscribe. If you really, really love us, go ahead and hit that bell button there uh, so we can see you next time. Uh, give us a subscription. I'll take People Magazine, please. <laughs> Follow along for more quick breakdowns of the most Googled medical topics and you'll be able to walk outside, see your friends and be like, yo, tetanus is a bacteria, it affects your nerves, causes muscle spasms, a vaccine prevents it, and we're gonna make sure that we do everything we can to protect the world against it. Push out.